There are so many books that I'm excited about in the coming year. I'm Dara Spiker and today we are going to talk about my most anticipated books of 2022. I have narrowed the list down to just 22 books in 2022 because I could just keep going forever. <laughs> my list was like over 30. So these are the ones I am most excited and plan to read. I'm actually going to read them this year. So I will check back in at the end of the year and see if I read these most anticipated books. I'm doing this in the beginning of February, but I have a couple super anticipated books that came out in January. So I do intend to read them, but I haven't read any of these yet. I'm gonna go in order of release date, but these release dates have already been changed a couple times. And I'm just going with what I think is the most up-to-date way. So we're gonna go through from January all the way to August. And then I will come back in June or July and do a most anticipated of the second half of the year. Now the first one I got as an art, it came out in January and it was, it is The Appeal by Janice Howitt. It is an epistolary novel told in like documents that lawyers are going through to try to figure out what actually happened. So the setting is a local theater group. They are rallying around a young girl. The director's granddaughter has some kind of health crisis and so they are raising money. Someone ends up dead, we don't know who, and through the course of reading the letters, emails, paperwork that the lawyers are reading, we figure out what happens. I love that kind of story. I love it when you don't actually know what the current is right away. Now the second book is Find Me by Alifair Burke. I have read everything that Alifair Burke has ever published. I even have 2021 best expense stories. I, I think it's something like that. She was the editor for that, the guest editor. I just love what she writes and then the summary got me even more into it. So a young woman is thrown by a car, found by the side of the road in New Jersey. She has no memory who she is. 15 years later, she goes missing again. And this time her best friend and I think a cop start looking for her and unfolding like what was going on in her life? Who was she really? What's going on? Um, and the description calls it suspense filled and twisty, which I love in a thriller. Now in February is Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead. If you watched my best books in 2021, which if you missed that, I will link it up. You'll see that I loved one of my favorite books of the year was Finley Donovan kills it? Is killing it? Finley Donovan is killing it. I can never remember the title. This is a follow-up to that. Uh, Finley Donovan is a single mom of two. She's a novelist. She's trying to finish her next novel and her ex-husband is somehow wrapped up in the mob and she's trying to keep him alive. What I loved about the earlier Finley Donovan book is that it was funny but it was also like there was a mystery to solve and it was not really a cozy but it had fun cozy vibes without being like your stereotypical cozy. The next book is The End of Getting Lost by Robin Kerman. I got this as an arc from Nat Galley. First of all I have to say I love memory loss storylines where people don't remember what they are and I realize this is the second book already. Second out of like four I've talked about <laughs> where there's memory loss. Um, so a young woman uh, has a head injury and can't remember very much and this happens on her honeymoon. She's traveling all around Europe with her new husband and she's like he's telling her who she is and what they're doing and she's not sure if she can trust him. The last book that comes out in February and I already have it on hold at my library is The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. So last year I read The Guest List by Lucy Foley and I always take the dust jackets off um but I really enjoyed this. It was fun. It was creepy. It was atmospheric. I was kind of kept guessing to the end. It's kind of a Agatha Christie type locked room mystery. Part of the reason why I'm picking it up is because it's a literally dead book club pick. Kila of Books and Lala picked this for a February read and I almost always love what she picks. What happens is a young woman tries to, needs to escape her life, so she goes to visit her brother in Paris, but when she gets to his apartment, he's not there. And he's missing, so she starts looking for him and getting to know his neighbors. And it's been compared to the show, The Only Murders in the Building, which I really don't know how anything could possibly be like that, but that's what the reviews keep referring to it as like very similar to that. So, um, I kind of hope Steve Martin shows up, but I'm looking forward to reading that really soon, I hope. Now we're to March, the books that are coming out in March. Um, the first one I hope to read is What Happened to the Bennets, which is by Lisa Scottaline. I've wanted to read a book by Lisa Scottaline for a long time, so when I was offered an arc, I said, yes, absolutely. What happens is this very normal family has something very violent happen to them, and because
because of who the violence is related to, they are brought in to witness protection. And witness protection is really meant more for criminals than for like non-criminals. And so there's some difficulty there. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm excited. There are so many Lisa Scottaline books out that if I love this one, I can read her backlist and like keep reading her. The next book in March is Nine Lives by Peter Swanson. I have read everything by Peter Swanson and one of my favorite books is Eight Perfect Martyrs. <laughs> Eight Perfect Martyrs. I love this one, it's set in a bookstore. Nine strangers get a list with their names on it. They don't know each other and one by one, the people in the list end up dead in a really weird, odd way. It's like not murder, but some like weird accidents. And I think someone on the list is trying to figure out what's going on with the nine lives, with the nine people on the list. I love it. Sounds like a murder. It will be twisty. I will probably love it. Now that we're in March, there's a lot of books coming out in March. So the next one, which is something totally different, not a thriller, is the Kaiju Preservation Society. Now this is by John Scalzi. You can see I have a bunch of John Scalzi books here. My husband and I both really love him. Jay has read uh, the whole Old Man War series. I've read a few of those books, plus his funnier books like Red Shirts. And I think this is gonna be one of the funnier, lighter sci-fi books. John Scalzi himself is saying it's more like a pop song which I love in sci-fi. So this is a story of a guy who in the pandemic loses his job, ends up being a food delivery driver, and then his friend offers him a job where they take care of very large animals. Well, it ends up that they're taking care of kaiju, which are like the, it's like a Japanese word for like what Godzilla is, right? Like big monsters that come from an alien planet and they have to save these kaiju I think on on their own planet. Um, I'm super looking forward to it. I love a really funny sci-fi like Valenti's Space Opera or obviously everything by Douglas Adams. Um, so I'm thinking I'm really gonna love this. Back to the thrillers mysteries is um, a book by Kelly Garrett called Like a Sister. Um, Kelly Garrett has written two cozy mysteries based on a Hollywood actress and um, Kelly Garrett herself worked in Hollywood writing. And I haven't read those books, but I've read a lot of interviews talking about the industry and being a crime writer of color. She actually is a founder of Sisters in Crime, which is an organization for black women who write crime fiction. So I like Kelly Garrett. I'm excited to pick up this standalone book, which I think is a little darker than her cozies. And in it, a black reality TV star is found dead in her apartment. The police say that it's an overdose, but her stepsister does not believe that. So she does her own um, investigating to figure out what actually happened to her sister. The next one out in March is one I'm so excited about. <laughs> it's Run Rose Run by Dolly Parton and James Patterson. I've never read a James Patterson book, but I would read anything Dolly Parton ever wrote or ever did. She's amazing. I love Dollywood. I tell everyone if you haven't been to Dollywood, you, you have to go to Dollywood. It's not like any other theme park ever. I've already pre-ordered this book. Um, it should get here March 7th <laughs> when it comes out. So in it, a young singer, songwriter, uh, moves to Nashville to uh, pursue her career as a country singer, but she is also running to escape her past, and I'm all in. The next one out in March is The Club by Ellery Lloyd, and Ellery Lloyd is one of the authors, it's really a pen name of a uh, husband-wife team. They wrote People Like Her, which was one of my favorite books of 2021, and in The Club it's set in this very exclusive members-only only club that just opened on an island, and at the like debut event, things go wrong, people end up dead, I don't know. I love things set in like very wealthy, exclusive communities. I just love when rich people are trying to be exclusive and end up dead. <laughs> Only one book I have in April and that is The Younger Wife by Sally Hepworth. I have read Sally Hepworth's at least two books. I don't know if she has more. The first one was The Other Woman and then uh, The Good Sister. And her books are much more, they're not really thrillers. They're kind of like creepy, what's going on here atmospheric there's something wrong you don't quite know what's wrong kind of like a psychological domestic suspense not necessarily a mystery you're unfolding so in the younger wife a husband wants to divorce his first wife to marry a much younger woman a woman who's younger than his grown-up daughters and so they start looking into her to figure out what's going on because they think she might be a gold digger something's going on with his wife um his first wife that he wants to divorce 
the older wife, I guess, um, but we don't really know, only that she's in a vulnerable position. I also received an arc of that from NetGalley. Now we've got two books in May and they are both mother baby related, which I love. I read a bunch of mum noir um, books last year and I love that. M New motherhood is such a creepy time anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> you like haven't slept, you're confused about your life, you don't know what's going on, babies are weird aliens, and um, there's a lot of like fertile ground for you to kind of lose it or to feel like you're losing it. Just Like Mother by Anne Hetzel is coming out. I received an ARC review copy of this for free, super looking forward to it. Um, it's called a dystopian cult thriller slash gothic horror sign me up. I love a cult novel. And what happens is there is this cult of mothers, capital M mothers, who like worship their daughters and kind of shove their sons aside because they're trying to overthrow the patriarchy. So they're trying to like uplift women in this way that actually is very damaging for their children. Years after it dissolves, two people that were in the cult as children get back together and remind each other of like their memories start to unfold and they start to remember what actually happened to them and something else is happening to them in real time. I'm excited about it. It's got a super creepy cover that's called Just Like Mother. Also out in May is Magpie by Elizabeth Day. I also received an arc of this. This is about um, a young couple who is trying to conceive and they're doing fertility treatments. They take on a roommate um, who like rents out one of their rooms and they think it's great because the extra money will help them pay for the fertility treatment. But then they realize she knows way too much about them and she is way too invested in their baby and something is going on with this roommate. I love it, it's called Magpie. This already came out in the UK and it's just now coming out in the US. So in June are two books by authors I've already read, which is part of how I decided if I was ex like excited enough to commit to reading the book is if I already read something by them and I, and I liked it. So uh, first up is The Lies We Tell by Julie Clark. Um, she wrote The Last Flight, which is a story of people who switch identities at the, like, right as they get on a plane and then something happens to that plane. And so who escapes, who survives, you don't really know um, until the very end. And this is also about identity. So it follows a con artist who switches up names. And that is honestly all I need to know about it. I did not read anymore because I, with um, books that are very twisty, I don't want to know too much and I also don't want to give too much away. And then the next book is The House Across the Lake by Riley Sagar and I have read everything by Riley Sagar. I love almost all of it <laughs> a lot so I'm very much looking forward to this. I've already pre-ordered this one like I was not approved for an ARC and I pre-ordered it because I have to read it as soon as it comes out and these always have a really long wait list at my library. A recently widowed actress goes to a Vermont lake house to like recover and grieve and she drinks a lot of alcohol and has binoculars and she watches a couple across the lake in their house and something happens and it almost sounds a little bit like woman in the window um and I'm curious to see like what direction he takes it. What Riley Sager tends to do is pick a different genre for each of his books. So like one was kind of a haunted house book and one was like a road trip, scary road trip book. One was like a final girls book. And so I'm interested to see if this is like woman in the window, what he does with that trope. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I was thinking about doing a video on like where to start with Riley Sager since his new book is coming out and I've read all of his past books. If you'd be interested in that or if you'd rather have something like a tier ranking of all Riley Sager's books and like which one you should definitely read and which one you can skip reading, let me know in the comments below if you want that before this new one comes out. In July we have four books out by authors I really love. The first one is How to Sell a Haunted House. So I've read four books by Grady Hendrix and I don't usually read horror but his are just there's, just, there's usually only a couple scenes, at least in the ones I've read, that are really creepy. And like this, um, it's a Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, and I love it. It has like a very cool public library stamp. It has very cool end papers. Um, it's, ugh, this is just beautifully produced. Um, so I have high hopes for this next book. I've already ordered it. I just, I also really love his sense of humor. Like his books are very, very funny. So the blurb says, this is a hilarious and terrifying new novel that explores the way your past and your family can haunt you. 
that's it. That's all I need to know. Your family can haunt you, man. The next book is The It Girl by Ruth Ware, and I have it on my shelf one by one by Ruth Ware. I, um, this was a book of the month. I've read everything by Ruth Ware. Some I love, some are just like, okay, but they're always psychological suspense. Um, usually somebody feels like an outsider and there's a group of people that know each other really well. And this next book is called The It Girl. So in this one, a woman starts to rethink her friend's murder because a reporter tells her that the man who was found guilty of it um, wasn't guilty. So I don't know if the reporter is going to be really involved, but I love books that have like true crime reporters or podcasters in them. She reconnects with her college friend group and starts to like talk to them about what happened and revisit what happened. And I love a friend group where something happened in the past. Um, in My Dreams I Hold a Knife was another book like this where they're getting together after 10 years and um, their friend's death is kind of their reconsidering it. The next book is by another author that I've read everything by and that's We Lie Here by Rachel Housel Hall. I got approved for the arc of this book which I'm like trying to hold off and reading it when it comes closer because it comes out in July and so I like to review a book closer to the time when it comes out. Uh, Rachel Housel Hall has a detective series that I've read and enjoyed. One of my favorite books of hers is They All Fall Down. If you would like a where to start with Rachel Housel Hall, let me know below. Or if you want a like tier ranking. I never know which is like more useful. I could do that for Riley Sager, Peter Swanson, Ruth Ware, Rachel Housel Hall. Um, these, these authors that I found a couple years ago that I read everything by, let me know what what would help you if you want to read a couple before the new one comes out or do you even want to do that or if you like the new one you want to go back and like read their other best work let me know if you're interested in that below uh so we lay here yara goes home to for her parents 20th wedding anniversary and her mom's former best friend who she has not seen in years and years tries to tell yara about some family secrets and some of the things that have been hidden in the past and then ends up dead. So Yara has to figure out um, if she wants to learn more about her family history, if she should trust this person that her mom was no longer friends with, like what is going on? And that's We Lie Here by Rachel Hazel Hall. Now, another author who writes really, really different books every time they write is a Sarah Gailey called Just Like Home. And I have loved everything I've read by Sarah Gailey, especially last year's The Echo Wife, which was a sci-fi, creepy thriller. Um, this is going to be more like a gothic horror haunted house. So Vera goes home to her childhood house. Lots of people going home this year. Vera goes home to her childhood house where her father, who was a serial killer, buried the bodies. And her mom wants her to come home even though she hasn't been home in a long time. And it ends up there is this artist living out in the guest house and he's like slowly picking over the house and like messing with her memories. And then notes in her dad's handwriting show up and it's all very creepy and haunted. I love Sarah Gailey's writing. They've written a whole bunch of very different books. I've talked about them in the past. I can link below to some other reviews of their other books, including The Echo Wife, which was one of my favorite books of last year. And now we are to August. So this is the last month that I have any books that I'm looking forward to, plus we're getting to 22 books. So the final two books out in August is Stay Awake by Megan Golden. Now I received an arc of this from NetGalley and the publisher and I really liked, I requested this arc because I liked The Night Swim which was by Megan Golden that had a podcaster um, who was like looking into an old and a new mystery. In this one, this is another memory book, in Stay Awake, Liv wakes up in the back of a taxi with no memory of what's been going on. She has a taxi take her to her brownstone, which goes to someone else is living there. They tell her she doesn't live there anymore. Uh, she puts her hand in her pocket and there's a bloody knife. So she has to figure out what the heck happened, when in time she is, um, it's got memory loss, it's got an unreliable narrator, it's like the movie Memento because she has written on her arm like stay awake, don't go to sleep. 
what's gonna happen I don't know I'm excited and the last book of my 22 books I'm anticipating in 2022 is The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead now Ashley Winstead wrote the book I mentioned earlier in my dreams I hold a knife um, in The Last Housewife it's a cult book <laughs> there is a woman who has escaped from a cult that she entered in college with her best friend because a very charismatic wealthy man like got her into this cult um, years later she tries to bring down this cult of wealthy patriarchal men she and she enlists the help of a true crime podcaster so it has two things i love people taking down cults true crime podcasters wealthy men behaving badly i don't always love that but i love it when they're like taken down um so that's the last housewife by ashley winstead and the cover has a hands knitting so i just love it so those are the 22 books I'm looking forward to reading in 2022. I will check back in on the progress I do with that. If you want to see a like where to start with a specific author or tier ranking of all their books I've read, let me know in the comments below. I would love to kind of think through that and talk about that with you. I also have a video about the reading challenges and goals I've set for myself. The read harder challenge I'm going to follow, reading 20 books by black women. So when we add these 22 books, I think I've got my TBR figured out for the year. I'll link that down below. If you are looking forward to any of these books or some other books, tell me in the comments below. Make sure you like the video and you subscribe. If you're new here, you will find out when my next video comes back when I actually read these books. Thank you so much and have a great day.